it's Misty from Love That Shot. In this video, I'm going to share with you a really fun, easy technique for adding some movement and interest into your landscape photography. And one of the things that I really love to do when I'm when I open up my photo in Photoshop is I really like to see what Photoshop has to offer to really create some imagination, creativity into my photos. I'm really never worried about what's right, what's wrong, what other people are doing. I just really want to use Photoshop, um, the tools that are in Photoshop to really bring out my vision for my photos. So I really think about it more of artwork rather than like photojournalism where I need to capture the scene as it was. So I like to, yeah, create a work of art. And so what I really loved about this photo was the blue and the clouds in the sky and the reflection in the water. And I really wanted to play with that. But the problem was, this is what I actually shot. This was the scene that I captured. And yeah, it's okay. It still has the brightness in the sky and the clouds and the reflection. But I wanted to create that movement and interest and really make it my own. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So I'm just going to delete this so we can start from scratch. And this is this photo I have done some edits in Camera Raw and things like that. But what I really want to show you is the creative part. So what I want to do is duplicate my background. So I have a copy. Now I want to add a filter to it. So let's come up to the main navigation, click on filter, hover over blur, and then select radial blur. And this is a really fun uh, effect to add to your photos. It's probably going to be default on spin. If you do spin, it's going to look like a vertigo type of effect, which I don't want here, but could be really fun on another photo. So let's pick zoom because that's the effect that I want to go for. And I'll stick around 20 for the amount. If you go really high, then you don't really see much definition of clouds. It's just really blurred. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and let it do its thing. And so already it's giving me the effect that I really love. But I want to bring out some of the definition in the clouds a little bit. So I'm going to drop the opacity of this layer to 60%. So now you can kind of see some of the fluffiness in the clouds. But we still have a problem. Our mountain is blurry. <laughs> we don't want a blurry mountain. We shot it crisp. It should be crisp. So let's add a layer mask to that layer and make sure that the black is our foreground color. We've selected the brush tool and make sure our opacity as it is at 100%. So now you just go and paint over your mountain and bring in that Christmas <laughs> crispness back. And sometimes I like to drop my opacity down to about 30% and kind of go over the edge of the mountain just to blend in a little bit more. And there we go. We've brought our mountains back into crisp uh, detail and we have our blur. One other thing that I like to do to finish off my landscape photos is really bring out the vibrancy because this uh, sky is so blue and just really make it um, come alive. So to do that, I'm going to add an adjustment layer by clicking on the circle icon in the bottom of the layers palette and I want to select vibrance. And so I'm going to take the vibrancy way up to probably about 38 and then the saturation I might go up oh, to about 17. So now I can close that and here's the before and the after. It's a real subtle change but way worth it. So here's the before of no effect applied and here's our zoom effect. I just love how this technique adds movement and interest to my photos. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tip. 
And yeah, until the next video, I'll see you later.